Okay, so this tutorial is going to cover uh, supply, uh, and I'm going to cover two things here, supply production, um, and then um, supply distribution and movement, and kind of how to get all that get all that supply to your troops um, on the battlefield. So first, supply production. What is supply? Supply is identified by two things in the game, two categories. You've got general supply, which is food, water, clothing, all that fun stuff. Uh, and then the second category is ammunition. So if you press number two on your hockey, it'll pull up your supply tab. It'll show you where all your supply stockpiles are, uh, and then also where on the map your supply can move through. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Just bear in mind that uh, the green is where supply can get to, and the red is where your supply cannot currently get to. And uh, in the, the next tutorial, military control, that is what dictates the green and what dictates the red. Um, but for purposes of this video and purposes of right now, let's just talk about production. All right, so production. Who produces supply? General supply is gonna be your brown cargo containers here. And then your ammunition is going to be your your ball your uh, your balls here your uh, cartridges your cannonballs your uh, you know all that sort of stuff. All right, so production um, cities produce uh, production or produce production produce supply uh, depots produce supply harbors produce supply and then towns and forts produce a small little bit of supply. Uh, your cities, which are identified uh, as really any kind of um, town area that's size four or bigger is a city and they produce one every level of um, every level of city is six or so supply now that's what the manual says but that doesn't add up to me because I checked several places so Richmond here is eight uh, and so eight times six does not equal 76 <laughs> but um, the just just know I think all I really need to know for the game is the bigger the city the more supply it's going to put put out each turn, um, and then depots and so forth can do that. But let's let's analyze that for a second. Let's look at the city. So Richmond is a size eight city. If you go into the supply tab, well, even if you don't go to the supply tab, say we're just the normal uh, tab here. If you hover over the region where that city is located, that region will tell you how much supply it is producing every turn, as well as how much it currently has. So notice here there is two thousand and fifty nine general supply in this region. And the, the slash identifies the ammunition that's in this region. So we have 154 ammunition here. And then in brackets, it tells you how much is being produced per turn in that region. So in addition to the 2,059 general supply we have here in this region, we're producing 203 a turn. And then in addition to the 154 ammunition we have in this region, we're producing 28. Um, Go to the supply tab, and it'll give you even more information. So, as you can see here, these little um, icons will demonstrate basically the general um, uh, surplus that you have in that region. So, we have a whole bunch in Richmond. We have a whole bunch up here in uh, looks like Spotsylvania, otherwise no, otherwise known as Fredericksburg. Uh, now, how is it that we have 203 general supply being produced in Richmond and 28 ammunition being produced in Richmond? Well, that comes all from these structures that are within the region. So we have the city of Richmond, which is a structure. It's producing 76 supply. We have a harbor, which is a structure. It's producing 14 supply and 5 ammo. We have an ironworks, which is producing 1 money, 8 war supply, and 40 supply. Uh, war supply is different, by the way. War supply is this up here and it goes into building stuff. It has nothing to do with feeding your troops. It's basically, you know, the parts that go into making guns, tank, or tanks, whoa, tanks. Ooh, geez, that'd be nice to have. Um, cannons, boats, war vessels, all that stuff, all right. Uh, Virginia Manufactory, which is producing 40 supply and 16 ammo, and so on and so forth. You get the point. So all these different structures produce supply per turn, all right. So those are your cities, and then your towns, which are, which, by the way, this always annoys the hell out of me. Even though City Point is a size one, quote unquote, city, uh, the manual says that they're, they're towns. So anything that's a one, two, or three size city is what's called a town, um, and then four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way through to, to, to number 20 um, is a city. Now, 
Uh, why do you need to know the difference? Because a one, two, or three size quote unquote city um, cannot forward supply. Um, they just stockpile it, but they, they can't forward it. Uh, whereas a four, five, six, and up size city can forward supply per turn. So here at Petersburg uh, is a size four city. And so even though it does have a depot, if it didn't have that depot, it would still be able to forward supply. Okay, now there's not really a whole lot you can do with regards to the size of towns or cities to increase their size, thereby increasing their supply production. Um, now, uh, except for a couple limited things. So your cards, you know, those uh, decision-making cards you can do, there's some cards there that will improve the development of a particular region. So, for example, here I've got uh, over at Springfield, Missouri, I am using this card. It's Develop Territory. Now what it does is it provides plus three developmental points to this region. Now if you play enough cards that do enough development, then I think theoretically that'll increase the size of the town or city. But it's, it's pretty negligible. I mean you gotta do a lot of turns and stuff just to get Springfield up to three and then maybe four and that sort of thing. So just be aware that that's one way to increase the size of towns or cities. Another uh, thing you could do also to increase the production of a town or city is to go forward and do the uh, Department of Interior um, decision-making um, actions here. So, for example, build ironworks in Tennessee and Georgia. Now, you can do this, which will increase the production of supply in those particular regions. So, in this case, in uh, Rome, Georgia, Nashville, Tennessee, and Memphis, Tennessee. You drop 300 big ones, 75 tons of war supply, and you build ironworks in those three areas. And then what you get to have is this. Um, for example, in Richmond, we've already done that decision for Virginia and South Carolina. And so what you'll have, oh, stop, is an ironworks here, which is what we built uh, in Richmond, I think Manchester, and then uh, one other location. So notice here now we get 40 more war supply, or rather 40 more supply from Richmond alone after building that ironwork, and that's every turn. Um, so now Richmond's providing 40 more supply. As you can see, this little little device being worked here at Manchester, we're doing something similar. So the foundry is currently under production here in Manchester, and once that is done, once this red is completely uh, gone, uh, we will have the 40 supply, 8 war supply, 1 uh, money from Manchester as well. So even though Manchester is only a size 2 town, we're going to have the Bologna foundry there, and it's going to be providing 40 supply. Now, do know that towns cannot forward supply, right? And so we're probably going to have to build a depot here to pull the 40 supply that's going to be built here forward. Um... I don't think it'll forward on its own, but that's it's good to know. Uh, and then if you notice here, the little the little um, industry tab here tells you that there's uh, um, that it has ironworks at this place. Um, so that's that's some ways to increase the production of your cities uh, or your or your um, harbors. Uh, I want to say like harbors produce not as much as cities, but but pretty close. And then depots, which is something you do have a lot of, um, uh, I guess, manual control over and can kind of shape the way that your production looks. Depots can, build, be, can be built a couple different ways. So first, let's take uh, Evans, for example. It's Evans, and then he has one brigade of infantry. If you go to this little hammer tab, he cannot produce a depot, cannot build depot, because he doesn't have a big enough uh, size force. Now, I don't know what the threshold is, how much, how the, the size of your force has to be. I just know that if you go to like the Shenandoah force here, we have two generals and a couple brigades of infantry along with some artillery. He can build a depot if he wants. Um, what is a depot? A depot does a couple different things. Um, first and foremost, it uh, is a used as a place to kind of hoard supply. And so see all these flashing areas? These are either depots or cities that are four or bigger. Um, Strasbourg is definitely a depot because it's only a town size two. But if we were to click Strasbourg, you'd see it has a depot here. And so what it does is it hoards supplies to be used to be funneled to the forward um, forces that uh, are currently populating the battlefield. But depots also have an additional function in that they produce supply. So if we go to Harper's Ferry, for example, 
be a pain in the butt to click. Um, you notice they have a armory, but then they also have a depot. So the depot provides nine supply a turn. Now, if we have Johnston uh, build a depot, it'll increase the this depot here from a level one to a level two, which means that it will then produce more supply and more ammo per turn. Um, so if we go here, it'll it'll that'll increase the supply from nine to whatever, and then ammo from two to whatever. Um, that'll increase that number. So you don't necessarily need to have more than one a level one depot in a in region. It just depends if you feel like you need more um, more general supply and more ammunition on the battlefield. Um, that may be one way to address that. So um, let's go over here. Uh, additional ways to build depots is um, you know with your with your troops. Like here, you know, Polk can build a depot. He only has two brigades of infantry, so apparently you don't need a whole lot. Another way, though, is to take your supply train. Oh, that's why. Okay. So a supply train can build a depot if you have two or more elements of supply train. I'm going to put them back in there. Uh, or the other way to do, which is uh, what I actually did in uh, New Madrid and Island 10, is if you go to your naval tab and build ships, you can build flatboats. So I think it's two or more elements of flatboats can build a supply depot. And uh, obviously the number of elements involved in building a supply depot will make it that much more robust. So we took flatboats, one uh, or four elements of flatboats, and we built one here at Island 10. That's why it's flashing. And so now we get six supply and one ammo from there. And then here at New Madrid, we did the same thing. Um, and that gave us six supply and two ammo being produced here. Now, I didn't build the, the depots here to produce supply. I built them here to kind of um, hoard supply and have supply pulled up from the rear. But just note that there there is some additional benefit to de depots than just doing that. Um, I would say that most players probably build depot for supply line purposes, not for production purposes. Um, but they do have that added benefit and you can certainly build a pretty robust production uh, region with just depots if you keep building up those depots from level one to level two and so forth. So Charleston, we built a depot here. Um, we actually used McCullough's force to do that. So we built a depot uh, and now we have... Ah, so annoying. There we go. Uh, it's a supply six and two ammo output per turn depot along with a place to kind of hoard supplies and ammo. Okay, uh, one final thing that will affect your um, supply production, uh, either positively or negatively, is loyalty. So the loyalty of a region that typically would produce supply can be either enhanced or mitigated through the loyalty um, in that particular region. So what do I mean by that? So take here Knoxville. So historically, Eastern and Western Tennessee were very much split in terms of their loyalties. Uh, Western Tennessee definitely leaned Union, whereas Eastern Tennessee leaned Confederacy. Here in Knoxville, we currently are producing 11 supply, another 3 supply, so 14 plus 1 ammo, and then uh, 7 supply, so 21 supply and uh, 3 ammo. However, we only have 36 loyalty here. Uh, were we get that were we to get that loyalty up to a hundred percent these numbers would all drastically increase uh, according to the manual which I'm not sure if the manual is out of date because some of the numbers that it provides in the manual are already inaccurate but at least according to the manual um, your loyalty increases your um, supply production 50 percent beyond uh, what it currently would produce. So if you have a hundred percent loyalty, then your supply, your total supply production will be increased by 1.5. Um, so here we're producing, uh, what are we producing here? Seven and three. So let's say, pretend this is a hundred percent right now. Uh, we'd be getting another like three or four supply on top of that seven and then another like one ammo. Um, but anyway, just, just bear in mind that loyalty does have an impact on your supply production in supply areas. 
And so if you're looking to increase your supply production, perhaps that's one way to do it. So what I did was I built a militia dude here, and then I have martial law, which is one of your cards you can play, um, going on here, which increases your loyalty by 20%, um, plus having a soldier in that region for a prolonged period of time will also increase the um, the, the loyalty there. Um, so just, just know that loyalty does impact your supply production. Okay, so I've talked about supply production and how to produce supply, both general supply as well as ammunition. Now I'm going to talk about how do you get that supply to your troops? How do you get it to the front lines to ensure that your troops do not starve to death or do not run out of ammunition? Um, first rule of thumb, typically a unit has two days, or rather two days, two turns worth of supply before they're completely depleted. That's, um, what, 28 days worth of stuff. Um, they won't run out of ammunition unless they engage in battle. So you have uh, two days, two battles worth of ammunition or 28 days worth of supply. Um, now that could, could typically go up or down depending on, um, other factors in the game, but usually it's about two, two turns worth of supply. Um, so there's a couple different ways to deal with that. So notice first I have Huger out here. He's out away from town. He's not anywhere that has supply right now. Um, this green area is uh, supply, so he is technically receiving some supply, but not a whole lot, partly because one, it's mountainous, two, there's no railroad tracks or anything like that. Um, so how do we deal with that? Well, one thing we can do is we can give him supply trains. These supply trains are like mobile supply units. They will fill up on supply. Notice here this particular one with four elements of supply trains. Here he's with the 80 supply and 80 ammo. Um, Huger, Huger's force here of 170 power uses 25 a turn. So that 267 points of supply includes these three. If we take this out of here, now he only has 36 points of supply and he uses 22 a turn. So that means he's got about a turn and a half less to, left of supply. Um, and that's based on these different troops here, um, all the, the how much supply they actually have on them, again, which is two days, you know, two turns worth of, of supply. So we put those back in there, and uh, there you go. So obviously I'm going to combine these forces. Um, but that's one way to supply your troops is to take supply trains or uh, naval transport vessels, which accomplish the same thing. Um, Naval transport vessels are these, these right here, these transport vessels, they can also carry supply. Um, so for example, down here, the uh, Union is attacking me down at Galveston. That's way down here in the Gulf, way away from his uh, typical chain of supply. But if he has naval transport vessels here, then they will provide supply to McCall's force, even though um, he is way, way far away from um, the Union lines. So again, supply wagons or uh, naval supply vessels are two ways to supply a force that is away from the supply line, which right here, Covington, is our closest supply line. All right. Now, when you start the game in the Grand Campaign, you do not have this supply area in the game. <clears throat> you have to build it. So what we did was we went ahead and we built a, a depot. Depots are marvelous, marvelous things because they allow you to really customize where uh, your supply lines are. So as you can see here, we have a supply line from Garysburg to Petersburg to Richmond to Fredericksburg to Manassas over to Strasburg, up to Harper's Ferry. So that is how uh, Beauregard, who is in, normally in Manassas, I'm going to pull him back, uh, and Johnston are receiving their supplies through this supply line. Um, it's all automated. You don't actually dictate how much supply goes up per turn. Um, the game just does some sort of algorithm and says, hey, you know, you got this size force of Harper's Ferry. This is how much they need, and then it pushes it upward. Okay. Uh, however, uh, my West Virginia force did not have the same luxury of a nice robust supply line. Um, I had to actually build this out here to give me any semblance of a supply line for West Virginia. Um, how did I do that? Well, there's two ways to do it. 
One is to do uh, the kind of, uh, I guess, the easiest way is if you have a force in an area, a large enough force in an area, um, you can just go ahead and build a supply depot. So use the hammer and you go build a supply depot. Uh, notice here in Harper's Ferry, we already have one. Um, this would just level it up a, a another level, which would then, um, I would, would, one, definitely increase the amount of production of supply per turn from that depot. Um, but it also may perhaps increase the amount that it can hold. Um, I'm not certain on that. Don't quote me on it. But I'm pretty sure the larger your depot is, the more supply it can hold. So that's one way, is with the force, build a supply depot. So I actually did that here. Is I, I built a supply depot with a general and a couple of uh, brigades of infantry. I'm pretty sure you need a, a general in the area. Um, I've never seen a situation where <clears throat> I have a massive force and I don't have a general there and I can't, and, uh, and I can't do it. So like here... This usually would be a big enough force to build a supply depot here, and yet it won't let me do it. Um, <clears throat> so usually need a general present there. But as you can see, one brigade's not going to be enough because we have a general, one brigade, and that is not enough to build a depot. So that's one way. Uh, another way, which is a pretty fun way to do it, and this is how I have uh, done it over in the um, Mississippi Theater, is if you go to um, your boats... You can actually do it with flat boats. So I think you need at least two elements, but uh, we have four, which is nice. And you uh, build the flat boat, and you can use the flat boat to construct a depot. So we built flat boats, and then what we did was uh, we built uh, flat boats in Island 10 and New Madrid, and uh, used those flat boats and converted them into depots. So now, as you can see here, New Madrid is already starting to stockpile supply. Um, and uh, Island 10 has a little bit, but not a lot. Um, and then with Charleston, I just took Polk and I built a de depot, um, and I could build another. Now notice here, he's in the front line. There is no surplus of supply here. And that's because he's using everything he's getting um, between the supply here, the supply train, which is probably collecting whatever is extra, uh, and whatever can be pushed forward to the front. Um, so that's another way to kind of control at least a little bit how your supply lines operate. <clears throat> I also built a supply... Uh, depot here in Fayetteville and I used a flat boat and built it in Ozark uh, again the theory being this way I can um, funnel supplies to Springfield where which, which is my my main force um, concerning is you got this artillery here I don't know what this artillery is I don't have much defense I'm probably gonna want to deal with that uh, since that is a supply yard it's got 235 supply and 32 ammo that is concerning I probably want to deal with that um, Probably take him and put him down there and put him over there. But anyways, uh, so that's another way to um, maximize your supply forward is to do the supply depots. Very, very helpful tool to have in your toolbox. Um, another thing you can always do is capture an enemy's you know supply area. So like that artillery is going to take uh, Ozark and take all its supply from me. That's another way to kind of keep your supply moving forward is to capture the enemy's supply. Uh, but then also, one nice thing the Confederates have, or the Union has available to them that we don't have, we being the Confederates, is that um, the Union can supply their uh, any kind of coastal unit through the shipping lane tab here. And so they can put transports here uh, in a shipping fleet, and what they will do each turn is supply places like Fort Pickens. Um, as long as a uh, Confederate force is not in this coastal waterway here blockading it, um, Fort Pickens will receive supply from the shipping lane. Um, very helpful tool available to the Union. Makes it so that the Union has a lot of flexibility with what they do. Um, in addition to the shipping lanes, you obviously have the naval transports that you can take with you to supply as well. So between those two tools, it really makes it that the Union can really go anywhere they want on the map, uh, making it very difficult for the um, Confederates to respond. Um, additional note is that cities that are four or higher, so like Petersburg or Richmond um, or Rayleigh, can forward supply. You don't need a supply depot there to forward supply. However, I have found that most of these cities already have a depot there, um, but they don't need one.
So that being said, we may probably want to build one um, at Florence because it's a nice little cross point from west to east um, to help forward supply. Because as you can see here, we've got Charleston, we've got a whole bunch of supply. Savannah, whole bunch of supply. It's not going anywhere just yet. Um, and part of that is attributable to what I'm about to talk, talk about uh, in terms of your um, rail points and your river points. But it's also because, you know, if you don't have uh, big enough depots to pull what's being produced here, they're only going to pull a little bit per turn as opposed to the maximum they could do, which right now it's not an issue for us because we're in 61. But if you have a big old huge army in 63, they obviously knew more supply and ammo per turn than uh, otherwise would need. All right, uh, last bit of discussion here on transporting supply before I conclude this video. Notice here we have 153 rail points and 77 river points. Um, it also tells you your railroad supply capacity is average. You need a minimum of 210 points for full transportation. Your river supply capacity is very limited. You need a minimum of 84 points for average transportation. And then you have no naval supply capacity thereby preventing you from transporting your supply over the seas, which is the Union I was just talking about. So what this means is that if you have 210 points of full transportation, which we only have 153, then um, theoretically uh, there's more than enough rail yard available and railroads to move Savannah and Charleston stuff forward. Um, right now we're taxing our rail system very heavily because we've been using it for troops. And so that means there's not a whole lot left at the end of the turn to pull this stuff from Savannah, pull this stuff from Charleston, and send it up to the front lines. Um, we just got a lot of a lot of supply here deep down that's just not moving forward. So one of the ways to push this forward to the front lines where it's needed is to have a robust river uh, and rail point system. Um, because right now we are already deficient in rail points and river points. And if we use any troops at all to move by rail, that's going to deplete it even further, leaving less rail and river for our supply to move forward. So always keep that in mind. Um, really, I think the rule of thumb is don't move troops just because you want to. Move them because you have to, either, that, either because you're about to go on an offensive or you're, you're moving strategically on the defensive. Um, don't just move them because you kind of feel like it, because what that does, it does have an impact both on the cohesion of your unit the entrenchment of that unit, but also your rail and river points if you decide to use those to move them, which typically you are because it takes forever to go on foot. Um, you're going to be using your rail and your river uh, almost exclusively, and if you're not, you're already kind of in a very precarious situation because the enemy can seriously um, outflank you and take advantage of you, take the, take the initiative really. Um, so just be aware of that, that these numbers are very, very important. Build them up as soon as you can. Uh, and then uh, between that and your depots, um, build those sort of things to make sure that your supply is getting pushed forward. Um, and if you're not sure whether everything's getting pushed forward the way you'd like it to, look at your city size. Make sure you have three, you know, size four cities or bigger um, to help push that supply forward. And if you don't build those depots in places like Humboldt, where it's a four-way networked railroad system. That's a beautiful place to build a, a, a depot. Um, or build them along a river highway like the Mississippi, where you can push stuff forward. Um, all of that makes a huge difference in your uh, game planning. So with that, I'm going to conclude this supply video. Please check out the next uh, tutorial on military control, which is a little bit of an overlap with supply, but also deals more heavily with um, strategic and tactical advantages associated with um, having military control in a particular area.